Um, if we look at some of the uh, inputs here down the left side of the screen, the first one is our information, project information and notes. The second one is our material data. We'll see here that we can select material from a drop-down list, or we can, which would, which will pick a material density and a surcharge angle for that material, or we can manually change those values as we are here. You can see the green line go across the top, so everything is being recalculated. The capacity of the cross-sectional area is being recalculated, and the percent loaded is being recalculated every time we uh, hit that button. If we go to the belt tab, we'll demonstrate another uh, feature program. Every component in the system has an auto calculate or an auto select button. And uh, when we're in, the auto button is, 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 uh, is chosen. Uh, whatever database we select in the drop down list, the belt that satisfies the conditions is automatically selected. In this case, uh, EP, 3 ply EP750. And the rating and the weights and the and the um, lasting modules so that belt is automatically put into the system. Anytime we're in auto mode, you'll see the icon there for the belt tab is blue. That gives you a visual representation that you are in auto mode. If we click it in user mode, the the program now um, locks in that belt from the database, and we have the opportunity of changing that belt if we'd like. We're still using database data. Um, but the data won't change unless the user now changes it and the belt tab is now gray which indicates a uh, visual indication that the belt has been selected and will not change unless the user changes it. Again we have some blue data here now, some dark and some light. Uh, dark blue is the top co bottom cover gauges which means the program will never change those unless the user changes them. Light blue such as the, the safety factor of the belt we can change that. It turns dark blue from light blue to dark blue and you can see the adjusted rating when we change the safety factor the adjusted rating drops to 63 newtons per millimeter and our maximum uh, running tension is above that. It's actually 100% of that so it turned red to indicate that we've exceeded the limit of our of our belt with a 12 to 1 safety factor. Anytime you want to go back to the uh, defaults just uh, just click on that default backspace, blank it out, hit enter, and it will go back to the default data. The third option we have is to click the cut and the custom radio, uh, uh, radio button, and uh, then we can input whatever data we'd like, and we can put in any custom data. We're not uh, we're not locked into uh, any of the database data. So if you have a specific manufacturer piece of belt that you want to use, you click the custom button and uh, put it in put in that data. Idler data is the same way. We have auto, user, and custom. So auto, the program is automatically selecting idlers based on the database. User, you select your own. Drive pulley is the same way. Click on user, the tab turns gray, and we can put in whatever uh, motor power we'd like. Take up same, auto, user. Auto, it automatically selects a take up tension user we can lock in a take up tension. Pulley tab and we're going through this very quickly as an overview but the pulley tab in with the basic button clicked gives you all the information that a pulley manufacturer would need to make a recommendation for you. Um, if you unclick the uh, basic button then you get some more uh, recommendations as to shaft diameters and etc. But basic button if you don't want to specify any type of pulley data you just want to give them the uh, data that's required to make a recommendation then uh, select the basic button. Here I uh, switched off the basic button but I'm still in auto mode and you can see shaft diameters and bearing diameters have now been selected and some calculations have been made for uh, dynamic bearing life, L10 bearing life and shaft safety factor and shaft deflection. I can, I can click on uh, user just like the others now and I can select specific uh, shaft and bearing diameters from drop down lists. Another uh, nice feature is if you'd like to have standardized on pulleys and you'd like to make uh, pulley 3 here in this case the tail pulley the same as the snub pulley. We put a 2 in there same as and it automatically will calculate the uh, same data and make that pulley the same as the uh, number 2 pulley which is the snub pulley. 
In this case, we'll blank that out and we'll make the number two pulley, which is the bin pulley, we'll make the same as the tail pulley. And now you see if we make any changes to the tail pulley, it will automatically make the same change to the uh, snub pulley. So we ensure we have uh, custom standardization between those two pulleys. It will continue to do the, uh, the calculations on uh, shaft uh, deflection and uh, shaft safety factors, but the uh, physical properties of the pulleys would remain the same. We click on the uh, geometry tab or the flight tab. You'll see here there's uh, uh, we can have up to 360 flights, and that includes carry carry flights or flights that's carrying material on the top side. Includes return flights. And includes pulleys. When we're in auto return as we are right, right now, the uh, return flights are automatically uh, the same length and the same, and just the opposite as the uh, as the carry flights. So it makes sure that the belt automatically comes back to uh, to uh, zero, and uh, it's a very uh, quick and easy way to input uh, profile data to ensure that uh, that you have uh, equal and opposite uh, flights on the return side. Uh, in later um, videos, we will. Uh, We'll go into user and, and show you how to put in a more complicated profile. You can see here as we've uh, changed the uh, profile of that conveyor and added 100 meters to it, the belt is no longer adequate. But since we're in user mode, the, the belt didn't change. It just turned the tab red. And also when we click on that, it shows us uh, what the problem is. Some of our inputs turn red such as here's the L10 life of our idlers is uh, is not adequate so it's turned red when we change the length of this conveyor. Some of our inputs turn yellow in this case uh, and the drive tab there's an input there that's turned yellow um, that means the uh, it's not necessarily red it's not necessarily a problem but it's something the computer can't determine whether it's a problem or not in this case it's not sure whether there's enough starting torque to start the conveyor it de because that depends on the drive to uh, method that you're using. So in this case it's turned the average starting torque number yellow and also the icon. So it gives you a warning that you need to go look at it. Um, you can go to the edit menu and look at the databases. The, uh, the database for the, uh, the belt data for instance and you can look and see where that data is coming from. You can also customize those databases. Uh, we also have the opportunity of changing all the default values that, that dictate when the tabs turn red. Uh, in this case, we can look at the idlers and we can set the uh, maximum RPM or the uh, minimum L10 life of the bearings, uh, the drive uh, default data, the belt default data. It's all shown here and uh, gives you the opportunity to change these numbers uh, if you'd like to. There are uh, various methods of calculations, uh, methodologies in the program. If you click on the uh, button here, it says SEMA. You can see there's the SEMA standard, which is the fifth edition, and then the universal, which is the sixth edition, and also the DIN. And if you open up, if you select DIN, it'll give you an opportunity to put in your own uh, F, uh, DIN F uh, fission coefficient, and the calculations will use that methodology. And uh, the resultant uh, friction coefficient for the conveyor will be printed here at the bottom of the screen. You can see there if I select uh, the universal method of 0.0216 is, is actually calculated. There are help files which you can select from the help menu. Um, there is also online, online support site which you can get to from the help menu. Um, this you can register for and log into automatically and it gives you access to a lot of information um, knowledge base uh, troubleshooter uh, downloads of uh, papers and different material news about the program and you can submit a ticket a help ticket if you have a problem or view uh, past tickets 
there are various add-ins to the programs which will which will be discussed later in uh, other uh, uh, versions of this uh, webcast you can switch units very simply from the menu and go to uh, English units or metric units or meters and millimeters uh, there are some utilities here we'll address later on uh, various things there the save open file new file uh, from the menu uh, folder so when you want to start a new program just go and and uh, uh, open new there is a uh, a printout option there and you see here you can also uh, do a preview and all the graphics on the screen will uh, will be available for you in your printouts and you can look through the various pages uh, you can print a PDF if you'd like to make an archive copy or email a copy to uh, someone else uh, you can print from here as well there is an option for adding your own uh, logo to this page it would be added uh, right here in the printout and there's instructions in the help files for doing that we hope this uh, quick overview has been useful and helpful and uh, gets you started uh, there will be additional webcasts and as we mentioned at the beginning uh, training video for your use